Today's lecture is about historical background of the English language. Although the English language history seems too complicated, it highlights the following standouts most clearly. 1. The settlement in Britain of Jutes, Saxons, and Angles in the 5th and 6th centuries. 2. The arrival of St. Augustine in 597 and the subsequent conversion of England to Latin Christianity. 3. The Viking invasions of the 9th century. 4. The Norman conquest of 1066. 5. The Statute of Pleading in 1362. This required that court proceedings be conducted in English. 6. The setting up of Caxton's printing press at Westminster in 1476. The English language has known three main periods. Old English, the key point of which became the Anglo-Saxon conquest, dates from AD 449 to 1066 or 1100 AD. Middle English, started from the Norman conquest, dates from 1066 or 1100 AD to 1450 or 1500 AD. Modern English splits into and early modern English that dates from about 1450 or 1500 AD. And, late modern English, started from about 1660 AD to the present time. Let's consider the Old English period. Old English was no more than a variant of West Germanic, spoken by Germanic tribes such as Angles, Saxons, and Jutes that further evolved from the original continental form and gained various regional dialects. The most significant dialects of Old English are 1. Kentish, spoken by the Jutes. 2. West Saxon, spoken by the Saxons. 3. And Northumbrian and Mercian, spoken by the Angles. However, a Mercian mixed dialect was mainly used for the greatest poetry, such as Beowulf, the anonymous 8th century epic poem, and the contemporary elegiac poems. Okay, now we turn to the Middle English period. The first part of the Middle English period, dated from the Norman conquest of 1066, still had inflectional language. The noun's declension was simplified further by dropping the final n from five cases of the fourth, or weak, declension. By neutralizing all vowel endings to e sounded like the a in modern English sofa. And by extending the masculine, nominative, and accusative plural ending as later neutralized also to us, to other declensions and other cases. Oxen is the only instance of a weak plural ending that survived in modern English. During the period of this linguistic transformation, the other Middle English dialects continued to exist or descended to the existing ones, still spoken in the XX century. Lowland Scottish, for example, is a development of the Northern dialect. The early part of the modern English period enlarged the vocabulary by the widespread use of one part of speech for another and by increased borrowings from other languages. During its development, modern English borrowed words from more than 50 different languages. The 16 pronouns it came into use, replacing the genitive form his, which was the only form used by the translators of the King James Bible 1611. The progressive tenses developed from the use of the participle as a noun preceded by the preposition on. The preposition gradually weakened to a and finally disappeared. Speaking about the 20th century English, we need to mention that. Nowadays, the speech of educated British people in the UK is known as received standard English. Many English people with regional dialects from their childhood learn received standard English at school and university. Its influence has become even stronger in recent years because of its use by such public media as the British Broadcasting Corporation or BBC. Widely differing regional and local dialects are still used in the different parts of the UK. Other critical regional dialects have developed also. For instance, the Irish English language has retained certain individual peculiarities of pronunciation, such as 1. The pronunciation of lave for leave and further for flutter. 2. Certain syntactical peculiarities. 
2.1 The use of after following forms of the verb be. 2.2 The use of archaic words such as a down for down. 2.3 Celtic borrowing such as banshee. Here come the references for today's lecture. Thank you for your attention.